this is something I bought a while back and um, it's an Ethernet cable tester basically so these you can get quite cheaply on eBay and other places now so you get a little uh, zip up bag some basic instructions and then you've got the two units of the Ethernet tester so on the end there you've got uh, an RJ45 connector for Ethernet cables you've got RJ11 for the American style telephone cables so you put these either end of the cable in order to test it so if I give you a demonstration I've got a short jumper cable here plug that in both sides and if I switch it on you can see that what it does is it cycles around all of the wires in the cable and um, sends the current down and obviously lights an LED um, so this is quite a nice thing oh, you can switch it to a slow setting as well so it scans more slowly and so this is quite a nice thing I mean a tester like this for only three pounds I think is really good value and it's quite simple and so what you can do uh, because there's two units what you can do is you can you could plug this in at a hub somewhere and then you know way over the other side of the building you could plug this in and so you could you could make sure that you're looking at the right cable and you can check all the wires in the cable so that's that's pretty good now I've recently got interested in cable testers because I was thinking about the problem of testing micro USB cables so um, I started to do some research about how you create a cable tester now I haven't opened this up yet but I'm going to open it up and we're going to see how this works but um, given some uh, circuit diagrams that I've already found on the on the internet I think I I know what's going to be in here I think what we've got in here is a 555 chip which is acting as the the clock and a um, 4017 which is basically a, a 1 out of 10 decoder and then of course you need some LEDs and some uh, some resistors as well um, but I'm interested to see whether I'm right and whether that's what's inside here so I'm gonna crack it open and we'll have a look the first thing I notice is it's got these pesky little security screws in here so it's got little triangular screws but I think I've got a screwdriver that will will go in there we'll turn that in any case so let's take the battery out yeah that's working Okay, so that comes apart quite easily in fact we've got classic through hole circuit board I can already see there's an 8 pin chip there which could be a 555 and then there's the 14 pin chip which I think is my 4017 let's look Ah, so we've got a couple of um, transistors in there that I hadn't necessarily foreseen. Oh no, there isn't a chip there actually, there's no 555. Um, let's see what's on this chip here. Yeah, it's a, it's a 4017. So that's a CMOS 4017. So I think what we what we've got here is the two transistors are somehow forming an oscillator, and then the 4017 is is obviously lighting each of those LEDs in turn.
We've got some diodes there as well. I might have to uh, sit down and work out the circuit diagram in a second. But let's have a look what's on the other side as well. Again, it's got these supposedly security screws in. on this side is the LEDs that you can see through the case and three diodes so this is you know this is obviously a completely passive device it's just turning back the current that it gets through the connectors so I, so I think what I'm going to do I'll sit down and draw on a piece of paper and uh, so that I can show what the circuit diagram looks like actually these leads look really crusty and horrible don't they and they obviously haven't been the excess leads haven't been clipped off the top so it's not a beautiful piece of engineering but there we are right so i'll work out what the circuit diagram is let me show you what i found here so the uh, there's basically only two parts to the uh, the the active part of the cable tester here so there's an oscillator here with these two transistors and then there's the 4017 which is um, a, a decade counter so basically the pulses go in and it counts 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 up to 9 and then it starts again so it clocks through all of these different pins. So if we look at the oscillator first now um, I've never seen anything quite like this before because um, usually an A stable using two transistors has two capacitors so you generally have two capacitors here on the on the two bases um, but here they've actually managed to economize they've dropped one capacitor and they've just got this single capacitor but it but it does seem to work so you got the um, the single LED so this is the flashing LED on the on the front panel that shows the the clock rate and then we've we've just got the square wave uh, clock pulses coming out of the uh, the collector of this transistor here um, and depending on the positioning of the the switch on the top this is either one hertz or three hertz so that, that gives you your two two different uh, scan speeds and if we look at the the main part of the circuit so we've got uh, eight outputs here for the for the eight cables and the remote is quite simple actually all that happens in the remote is that all of the LEDs are common together and then uh, one three and four ha have a diode going back the other way and similarly uh, on on this side you've got the outputs coming out through an LED and these are the LEDs on the on the master and uh, one three and four have got the diode coming back the other way and uh, the reason for this diode is so that you have one two three paths back to earth so for example if Q0 is on then none of these other um, pins can be on at the same time so that, that will mean that lead one is lit and the current goes through this cable it lights the matching lead on the uh, on the remote side and then the current can come back and it can actually route back through uh, one of these diodes in this case three or four so you can get the current coming back through the cable element three there through this diode and back to Q2 which will be which will be low because you remember if the, if this one is high then all of these must be low at the same time so that's it's quite an ingenious design actually um, I really like the the simplicity of what they've done and this is why the the whole unit can be shipped to you for only three pounds so looking back at the the unit um, 
So I've, I've put it, I've soldered on a little header here so it was easier for me to get power in here and to connect my logic probe. So what I wanted to do is just probe in here and show you how the 4017 working. So this is this is the LED on the collector of that transistor flashing with the square wave pulse, either one hertz or three hertz. And that signal also goes into pin three of the 4017. And you can see there on the logic probe that that's flashing between high and low, the same rate as the LED. And then there are the various outputs around the outside here. So for example, this one here is an output. So you can see once in every 10, it transitions to high. There it goes. And, and similarly, all of these outputs here will go low, go high in their turn as it iterates around. So yeah, it's a, it's a delightfully simple design really, and, um, and really good value. Um, so, as I mentioned at the beginning, I wanted to, wanted to make a USB tester, a uh, USB cable tester. So I think I might use something similar to this design and, um, or, or maybe even buy one of these and, and modify the connectors uh, and use the same logic. So uh, thanks very much for watching. Hope you found that interesting and uh, see you in the next video.